This is Maho Beach. It is world famous. I feel like I hear it. Say it. Say it. Oh Say it. my God. And it's famous because you're dangerously close to the St. Martin Airport. <laughs> Why was I the only one screaming? <laughs> so how about you come along on this adventure? <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. It's day five of our Royal Caribbean cruise and we have arrived in St. Martin and we're gonna explore the island which includes checking out one of the most famous beaches in all of the world. And we're also gonna check out a movie museum created by one of the creators of Yoda from the Star Wars franchise. You didn't think we could get away from Star Wars on this cruise, right? <laughs> we're also gonna try it, the guava berry, which is famous around these parts. We're gonna go to the, one of the most expensive and luxurious dinners here on the ship. But before all that, we're also gonna check out breakfast at the... <laughs> at we're doing the, a lot today. <laughs> yeah. Come with us on this adventure. finally taking advantage of Windjammer's Buffet for breakfast. We came here for lunch and I thought the variety was huge there, but for breakfast there's just as much variety. There's so many choices. They have all the standard things like eggs, bacon, pancakes, waffles, muffins, pastries. Build your own omelet station where you can make whatever kind of omelet you want. They have avocado toast. You name it, they've got it. I went pretty basic. I just got a lot of like the meats and hash browns. Like these little square hash browns are some of our favorite <laughs> things. So we each got two of them. And this is the first time we've actually had breakfast on the ship and it's day five. But I will say today at Windjammer, if you look out the windows, you have a fantastic view of St. Martin. It looks amazing. I also want to say that this cruise ship is the only place I can find the old Coke Zero at all the supermarkets, at all the targets. They've replaced it with a new Coke Zero, which I don't like as much, Kitra hates. Tell me in the comments below, like, what do you think? What do you think about the new Coke Zero? Is it better, is it worse? Do you agree with us, it's not as good? I definitely think breakfast is the way to go. <laughs> like, this wasn't like amazing by any means, but it was a lot of options and it really hit the spot this morning. I know for other breakfast options, you can also go to the main dining room. We're gonna try to do that at some point in the rest of the screws. And also Johnny Rockets has a breakfast that I think it's like $10 a person, unless you have the dining package like us, and then I think it's included. Everybody's complimenting me on my Baby Yoda hat today. I'm wearing it because we're going somewhere special. Yeah. But also... We're going to this airport where the planes come really, really close to you. And I told him, I'm like, you better take off your hat before the planes come because there's gonna be like <laughs> giant gusts of wind. Yeah. And you cannot lose this hat. <laughs> yeah, I lost my hat yesterday, so hopefully that doesn't happen today. So something I didn't realize is these signs are actually interactive. So today's Wednesday, August 25th, but if you go here, you can actually access a bunch of stuff, including if I wanna find the restrooms. Apparently, just right around the corner. Getting off the ship here is a much different experience than St. Thomas. I'm surrounded by Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships. It's like two skyscrapers. I feel like I'm in like New York City, but it's like a cruise ship. Yeah, I feel like at this port, you really feel how huge these ships are. So I remember what, yesterday you're like, oh, our ship doesn't seem that big. Like it's bigger on the inside. No, it's bigger on the outside. This is crazy to me. I think this is like, the exact same ship as ours, it just has a different name. It's already pretty windy, so I'm taking off the hat. It's not gonna happen to my my Virgo hat. <laughs> not not today! Not today. The cruise ports are always very touristy. If you wanna actually see some of these places, I highly recommend taking a taxi into town because you can get the stuff here, like guava berry is like a famous thing, but you'll find better versions of it downtown. up for 
we're gonna go to one of the most famous beaches in the world. And to get there, we're gonna have to take a taxi. It cost us $12.50 from the port each. So $25 one way. And you'll see why Maho Beach is so famous in just a few seconds. <laughs> I don't even bring my flip flops. We're such rookies. I don't know why it didn't like occur to me to bring my flip flops or my bathing suit. There's all these people in the water. They got like beers in their hand. They're just having the best time. I'm scared. <laughs> it's coming. You're scared? It's coming. Oh, it's a big one. Is it? It's a big one. Oh, no. It's a big <laughs> one. It's a big one. <laughs> okay, you're not okay, there's all these signs everywhere that say danger, like jet fumes, jet engine, so I was scared. Yeah, you're not supposed to stand by the fence. By the fence, okay. As I was saying, this is a world famous beach because you see those planes, they get so close to you. This is something that I would see on the Travel Channel like years ago, and I never thought that I would actually be here in real life. This is like a bucket list item for me, and it's so cool that we're finally checking it off. Like, this is, I think, the place to go when you're on St. Martin. And I don't think it's just a gimmick. This beach looks beautiful. The color of the water is a color of, like, bright aqua blue that you rarely see anywhere in the States. It's just, like, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Even the little ones are scary. Yeah. And one of the best things about this spot is it's right next to this bar where you can order all sorts of stuff. They even have a surfboard that lists the flight times. This place is called The Sunset. Even in their logo, do you see what I see? Yeah. I see our best friends. <laughs> if you didn't see our video from yesterday, we saw a lot of these guys on St. Thomas. And then I love how they have the airplanes like in the logo too. Such a smart idea to have a bar here, honestly. But it seems like they actually have food here too. They got a bunch of like your typical bar food, it looks like. Looks like a lot of it is very Americanized. What about the other side? And I think that's the drink. The other side, this is where it gets fun. All the cocktails, the frozen drinks. Oh my God, they got it all. Look, you could even get like a souvenir cup. I'm not gonna get that, but that's cool. Or like a bucket of beer. <laughs> I saw some people with that, like they took it down to the beach. That's pretty cool. I decided to try the guava berry colada, and this is made with St. Martin guava berry rum and coconut cream. Guava berry is a fruit here in St. Martin. It's not a guava, it's not a berry, it's its own special thing, and it's used to make rum, to make jams, to make a bunch of stuff all over the island. When you come here, you need to try the guava berry drinks. So. Wow, it has a very distinct taste to it. It's a popular thing to eat around Christmas time. And I can see why, it kind of has like those Christmassy type of spices to it, which I know sounds weird for a fruit. But it's like kind of, it's not bitter, but it's like not as sweet as you would think, like from a guava. Yeah, people say it's woody, fruity, spicy, bittersweet. Yeah, it's like woody. That's a perfect term for it. It's really good though. Mixed with that coconut cream, it's delicious. Probably gets like a four out of five kitras. I'm happy I tried it. Like, I love trying whatever like the local thing is, like where we're going. So this is really good. And it's really hot out today. So I know. <laughs> I also so wanted a hot. I wanted a frozen drink, and I got the berry breezy. This is raspberry vodka, blueberry vodka, and fresh squeezed lemonade. I know that this isn't like a local specialty, but I wanted something that would cool me off. And it looks cool. It looks like they actually took some frozen lemonade and the berry drink, mixed it together here. Oh yeah. Taste that vodka and that berry mixed together. 
I don't really taste the lemonade. Maybe it's because it's floating to the top. But it almost tastes like, um, you know, like when you go to Disneyland and you get the goofy slushies and they have a berry oh, yeah. flavor. It almost tastes like that, which I love. So I'm going to give this a four to five, Peter. Not quite the best, but it's doing the trick right now. Ready to go see some more planes? <laughs> you, don't, you have to ask. Kitra's was off going to the bathroom and a plane actually took off from the airport. You get a different experience when it takes off because the jet blast like hits you and the wind just like smacks you in the face. I'd take my, my Grogu hat off, thank God. You know, he wouldn't want to lose that. <laughs> <laughs> I do not recommend being up here when they go off. Be in the water. Woo, okay, let's let's go. On that note, I think it's time to go go back to the other part of the island. It burned! You didn't tell it me that it burned. It was just warm. I know, it doesn't burn, but it was warm. I was not expecting that. Dang! That's our taxi back to the back to downtown. Yeah, let's go. That one wasn't that big. I know. You never know if they're gonna be big or small. The bigger ones, I think, have more lights and stuff reflecting on them. But that one had a lot of light, so I was confused. I thought it was going to be a big one, but it was just a baby one. It's still cool, though. Just when we were about to leave, we were told there's a Delta flight incoming, so we're going to stay here for a few more minutes and catch this, because that's what you do. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> what a rush. It never gets old. We, we weren't sure if there was actually going to be a lot of airplanes here because of, you know, the pandemic. People are people flying. And even like on the list there, there was more airplanes coming in than listed. So, you know, maybe just sit out here with a drink and wait for it to happen. Yeah, I feel like the pro tip here is to go get a drink have your bathing suit, come out here and just hang out in the water because they're coming in at least every 30 minutes. So you're bound to see a few if you're out here for a few hours. St. Martin actually has two sides. There's the Dutch side and there's the French side. We are currently on the Dutch side in the capital of Philipsburg. And the reason why we're in Philipsburg is to go to the Yoda Guy Movie Museum this is a museum that was set up by Nick Maley. He is one of the people that is responsible for creating the iconic Star Wars character Yoda. And he moved here like 15 years ago and created a museum telling like the making of special effects in movies. It's kind of an inspiring story and we have never checked it out. Last time we were here it was closed. This time we get to peek inside and actually talk to the man himself. Why is there a gizmo in the corner over there? <laughs> this hole over there. What is he doing? Set him free. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is already the best day ever. <laughs> my best friend down here. He's a lot smaller than he seems. <laughs> yeah. Not only do they have <laughs> Wicked, I don't know what, what's going on with Wicked, but they have a little piece of hop wampa fur. Where else are you going to find that besides St. Martin? My name's Nick Maley. People call me that Yoda guy because of pictures of me working on the radio controlled version of Yoda that was in Luke's backpack. I wasn't the only Yoda guy that was there. Uh, there was a team of us. Um, my boss Stuart was the mastermind behind all the creatures for uh, principal photography. Um, and we thought he was building Yoda. But ultimately they needed four different versions and uh, 
and I was the guy who uh, put together the other three. I'm the guy they called it, that Yoda guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, made, uh, I made 60 odd movies, three of them were the classic Star Wars trilogy, uh, but a lot of other stuff as well. And uh, you know, I, I, from Star Wars being one of the senior techs, I went on to be uh, head of department on movies like Highlander and some others that have cult following. I have a drive to encourage young people to follow their dreams and be all they can be. I'm a kid from low-income housing who, who ended up rubbing shoulders with movie stars. So I like to help to encourage other people to have the confidence to do that. And I use the museum as a way of attracting young people that I can pass that message on to. So we're a non-profit trying to encourage young people to follow their dreams and make the effort to be something extraordinary. In the museum, we've got eight decades of movie making, something really for every age group. Um, basically everything from Darth Vader and Baby Yoda through Michael Jackson <laughs> to Humphrey Bogart and Bela Lugosi. Well, you had this like huge career in Hollywood, then you move here and it would have been easy to like just sit at the beach be drinking like a guava berry uh, drink. I think you... I think that to have a, a good career in movies, you have to be driven. And if you're a driven personality, sitting on the beach for ten years really isn't something <laughs> that works for you, right? I mean, I like the beach and I like to sit there and I like to relax. But I'm I'm a I'm a creator. I'm a maker. If I'm not making movies, then I'm making art or I'm making videos or I'm making something else. Uh, and so, you know, that's. That's just a part of who I am. We have a gift shop like no other, yeah. you know, because we have the original scripts from the classic Star Wars trilogy. We have stuff signed by Darth Vader and Boba Fett and Baby Yoda and BB-8. <laughs> the one thing we don't have are plastic toys and, and T-shirts <laughs> because we just don't want to change our name to Walmarts. This is a perfect likeness of the original Yoda. It's uh, been uh, devised from relics, so I reverse engineered to get back to a sculpt and then from a sculpt uh, to remake all the molds and we're in the process of finishing um, an absolute perfect reproduction wow. of Yoda as an animatronic puppet right now. Wow. And I do have a version of Yoda that I take to, to schools and to hospitals, kids' hospitals, to try and uplift uh, those people's lives when I'm doing conventions in, you know, in, a, in another town. Yeah. So this, is, this has come out of the master mold for, uh, for that work, where all the, the, the product from seven different molds has been <laughs> refabricated in a sculptable form and put back together again. Locally, we encourage the schools to bring kids to, uh, through as school parties. That is a free thing that we do in, in trying to encourage those kids to have a different view of the world. You know, it's normal to take your standards from the people you go to school with. It's normal to take your standards from the people you go to work with. Yeah. It's normal to want to fit in with your friends and you feel comfortable doing what everybody else does. But you know you can't live an extraordinary life by being the same as everybody else. Well and another said. word for normal is average. And average people get killed in video games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to be somewhere, you know? And, and why would I be in England in the rain when I could be drinking exactly. pina coladas in St. Martin? <laughs> yeah, right? You come to St. Martin, this is a pilgrimage for Star Wars fans, and you get to hang out in the sunshine as well. We say it's the most fun that a Star Wars fan can have in the sun. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it's the place, it's the place to go. Yeah, it's better than Tatooine. It's, it's, yeah, it's too right. hot there. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no pina coladas there. <laughs> That's true. And we're going to start doing weekly shows, uh, which are short clips, so attention span's not an issue. But we're going to be telling you <laughs> things that people don't know uh, about the classic Star Wars trilogy, about different characters, and also about makeup effects in general, special makeup, practical effects. Yeah. So we we kind of feature zombies and and all kinds of other things as well. There's too much negativity in the world. 
we're completely bombarded by negative opinions from the time that we're born. People who say, oh yes, but you couldn't do that. Oh, have a practical expectation. Well, if we all lived like that, we wouldn't have any astronauts, and we wouldn't have any movie stars, and we wouldn't have any great musicians, or any great physicists. You have to shoot for the stars if you're ever going to expect to get to the moon or anywhere beyond that. Well, Nick, thanks for ta uh, taking some time out of your life to talk to us. Yes, You're we welcome. appreciate it very much. Cool. This is best day ever. <laughs> so much fun. Good. It's funny. We, we wear all, wore all our Yoda stuff. I know. I, I, <laughs> I see that. I was decked out ready. Honey, do you need a Star Wars And I perfume? designed all of those as well. Oh, did oh, you? Oh, you actually designed them. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do need one. So what does Vader's fisk smell like? What is that? Oh. <laughs> oh. Huh. Leia's legacy. Nice. Rays of hope. <laughs> They're all essential oils. Um, you know, I spent a week with my friend who's a perfumer learning how to blend uh, oils, etc. That's so cool. cool. These two are both <laughs> light. Uh, not not only a, do you paint, you create perfumes. I'm, I know, I'm, you got I'm a creator. I make there. all kinds of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think if you have a creative... Uh, thing in you, you know, you, you're, you're gonna create a nice place to live. You're gonna decorate it nicely. You're gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna make things in, in many different ways. I can't believe that that's the original Yoda. Uh, that's the plunger, that's the skull. <laughs> this is a must do if you have a port day in St. Martin. Even if you're not a, a huge Star Wars fan, there's just so much interesting stuff in there. The guy does it all. He he paints, he makes perfume. Like I was blown away just at how big the museum was. I don't know what I was expecting, but it just kept going and going and there was, it was very well done and just such a cool experience. And I'm so happy that we finally got to come here. The main stretch of the beach in Phillipsburg has all like the touristy places to eat, drink, buy t-shirts, buy sandals. And we also like ran into like a lot of stray dogs. And I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but uh, I kind of feel bad because it seems like they're waiting around the restaurant for someone to feed them something. But we are going back to the ship. We've actually been to St. Martin once before and it was right after the hurricanes hit in 2017. And it's just, it's cool because when we came here before, everything was in shambles and it seems like they're finally starting to get more life and you know, then the pandemic hit, but it seems like finally, you know, more tourists are coming. And this is actually a very beautiful and nice place to swim. But we just didn't bring our swimsuits today. So I would recommend, it's only like a 10 minute walk from the ship if you wanna just come, grab a drink and go swimming like right here. Right now, cruise ships are only coming in two days a week here at St. Martin, which means places like that Yoda guy or all these like little stores are really struggling to survive because the tourism economy has not yet made a comeback here. So if you come here, spend some money, put some money into the local economy, help out a little bit. ship and we have eaten at Johnny Rockets. I think it's normally like a ten dollar per person if you don't have the dining package. We got the dining package. So this is our I, I didn't I didn't show we didn't show anything. Yeah. I got a cheeseburger, Peter got a grilled cheese, they were both five out of fives. Yeah. And we got milkshakes. Five out of fives for those as well. I feel like we're the heat outside has gotten to us. I know, I had to immediately go put on my swimsuit and like, I was dying, but I feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> I think now we're gonna go spend a few hours in the pool. We have a dining reservation, but it's not until like way later tonight. So we'll take you along when we go there, but we're, we're gonna put the camera away and just go enjoy ourselves for a little bit. So the cruise ship next to us is leaving. I'm not sure if you can see it. I can oh, definitely- Oh, I can see it. Yeah, but let's see. 
Yeah, now you can see it right there. Yeah, we're out of here. We're still tied up. What the heck? You're trying to wave to them, but they... Yeah, they didn't, they, they don't see me. <laughs> Bye! No one is waving back. <laughs> Literally not one person. Maybe the people in the suites will wave back at you. No. No one wants to wave at Ketra. <laughs> I'm gonna get one person to wave before the night's over. Come on, anybody. Hello, waving. Yes! You got the yes! one? We got that guy. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we got one person. Alright, we could go we could go home now. It's actually kind of cool to watch the ship leave. I didn't realize that they can move sideways. So they're like pushing out probably to get enough clearance and then they're gonna go straight. Yeah. Learning new things today. It's gonna be us in just, just like an hour or two. The whole reason I wanted to come out into the pools into the hot tub is because I thought we were gonna be in here when it was leaving, but I didn't realize that it doesn't leave at exactly the time. Like our time today was 5.30 and I thought like on the dot, like it was No, that's leave. like when you have to be on board by. What time is it now? Uh, it's like 6.09. What the heck? We're 40 minutes late. So what, you think it's gonna go by 6.30 or seven? Probably like 6.30. Okay, well it's just sitting here. <laughs> I don't know, my, my skin is already getting wrinkly. I know, we need to get out of here. Look at how cool the structure in the solarium is at night. It's like lit off. It's even cooler at night. Who knew it was, that would be even possible? Um, How cool is that? I love it. Why is there nobody out here drinking? We have to go and get ready for dinner, otherwise I'd want to stay here all night. Yeah. The heck? There's nobody, literally nobody here with the only people in here. Is it changing colors or is it just like the lighting changing? I don't know. It looked like it was... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get ready for, for dinner. I know it's like 7 o'clock, but there's like absolutely no one on the pool deck. And it looks so pretty. I mean, can I say a pool looks pretty? But I guess everybody's getting ready to eat for dinner, so. Tonight we're going to 150 Central Park. That takes place in the Central Park District. And it's the most upscale restaurant that they have on the ship. I don't know what to expect, but we know Kitra has has dressed up for this occasion. We don't belong there. <laughs> <laughs> I wore my one dress. It still fit me after COVID. So <laughs> figured why not wear it tonight, right? So 150 Central Park is kind of like a gourmet, expensive restaurant. And to me, the decor kind of reminds me of like the Wynn Casino, where it's like upscale oh, and ritzy, yeah. but <laughs> almost also feels like my grandma. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. kind of like grandpa <laughs> or grandma kind of in, in taste and style, but it's it's elegant and uh, simple in the colors that are chosen and the fabrics chosen, but also like ritzy. I don't feel like at home here. <laughs> like yeah. I feel like, um, no, I don't want to break anything. Yeah, don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> So today was the day that they came out with the Magic Keys, which is like the new annual pass holder program at Disneyland. And we were <laughs> off on, on, on the island. So I've been like waiting in this queue all day and it finally, yes. finally is our turn. I don't think we're gonna sell out anyways. And it, it's funny because it's now like 9 p.m. It's taken all day. Yeah. Yay, we're finally dream key holders. That's a, that's a weird sentence to say, but how exciting. Yeah. To celebrate, we're gonna try some of the house rolls here. It comes with a lemon and lime pepper and some kind of truffle butter and salt on top. I had the guy explain it to me like three times. I still don't understand, but oh my it God. It looks amazing. You like pull it apart, it looks like a flower. Yeah. A beautiful flower of bread and carbs. Oh my God, it smells like truffles. I feel like I have to whisper in here. It smells like truffles. It smells really good. You are gonna freaking love this. <laughs> wow. Good. Very truffly. Very salty. They're almost like Hawaiian rolls. 
By the way, that bread is amazing. Ordinary Adventure Star, so truffly, so good. <laughs> so truffly. This restaurant, like other restaurants have like a selection of signature drinks, like three or four or five drinks that are just made for those restaurants. Here, I think we only saw one. So I just got something off of like the Royal Caribbean bar menu. And what I got was a strawberry blonde. That's made with Tito's vodka, St. Germain, strawberry, lemon juice, and fresh mint mix. I've never had a strawberry blonde before, so I don't know even know what it is. I like strawberries. So that's, I just like, it was like, uh, you know, we don't have time. Strawberry, that's what happened. But it looks, it looks wonderful. I feel like this might have been better earlier today when it was like really hot. This yeah. looks like a refreshing kind of drink. Very tart. I wasn't expecting that. Is that what elderflower is? Three and a half out of five Peters. Not like one of my favorites, but it, it's also not bad. I ordered the Urban Garden Martini. This has Grey Goose vodka, cucumber, basil, and lemongrass. This was like like Peter said, the one drink that seems special for this restaurant. It's so strange, because all the other restaurants have had at least like four, three or four different ones. And I don't know, it didn't really like basil. I'm not sure if I'm even gonna like this, but I wanted to get it just because, you know what I mean? Oh my God. <laughs> it tastes like a garden. <laughs> Is that good or bad? It's very interesting. It's not bad, actually. It's not too strong on the basil. It tastes more like cucumber and lemon, um, but you, I mean, you can taste the basil. So, I mean, it is there. Wow. It almost tastes like that tomato water shot that we had the other night at uh, Wonderland. It's just very strange. Three out of five Kitras. I'm gonna enjoy this, but it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> so fancy. The first appetizer on the menu tonight is the crispy Berkshire pork belly. This has a parsnip puree, apple and watermelon radish slaw, and a port wine reduction. This actually wasn't even something that we ordered, but our waiter was kind of like, I'm gonna bring you a bunch of stuff. So he's gonna bring a bunch of stuff plus the stuff we ordered. I don't know if my stomach can handle it. We've been eating so good on this cruise, but this actually looks really good yeah like i don't even understand it but it, it looks so fancy too wow i don't even know like i'm not fancy enough to cut this i'm already making a mess whoa like how is it a brick like this <laughs> it's so thick this is so flavorful i feel like this sauce really makes it because the flavor by itself is kind of like basic, you know what I mean? But once you mix everything together, that's where it really shines. And I'd probably give this like a four out of five Kitras. It's good. I like it. It's so like, I don't understand it, but I like it. So the one appetizer are server, I was gonna say server, but I think he said like culinary director. Consultant or Consultant. Something. He's their culinary <laughs> consultant. Or I don't remember yeah. what he said. The, the one item that he recommended to us was actually the item I was gonna order anyway, so I, great minds think alike. <laughs> but it is the braised short rib. This comes with creamy mascarpone, polenta, roasted heirloom, carrots, crispy onion, and natural ar arhu, is that? Arju? And natural aju. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? Nothing, I love you. Natural aju. I love you too. <laughs> okay, look at this thing. It looks like a work of art. Yeah. Look wow. at that. Look at the presentation. I know. It looks good. Okay. How is this an appetizer? I don't... I don't know. This is like a meal and other... Mm. Oh my god, look at that. I feel like I overuse the word tender. You do. But this is like the definition of tender. If you look up tender in the dictionary, <laughs> there's actually a photo of this exact dish. It's so like, look at this. It's like so soft and fatty. And it, like you don't even need a knife. If this was an entree, I'd get it every trip. Every wow. Royal Caribbean cruise, five out of five Peters. Dang. This is this is one of the best things I've had on this trip. Wow. Yeah, for real. For real? 
<laughs> I'm not, I can't I'm even not. believe it. I always fake it, but this time, <laughs> this guys, time no lie. This time he's telling the truth. This time it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. Great, thank you. So fancy. It's that type of soup that they, uh, there's some stuff in there and then they pour it on top. <laughs> so, like he handed it to me, he's like, here's your bisque. And I was like, oh, I thought it was just like a weird concept and then he poured it on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the roasted spiced pumpkin bisque and it's creme fraiche, sourdough croutons and applewood smoked bacon. That was all the stuff that was below the actual soup. I'm hoping this can redeem last night's lobster bisque that I had. <laughs> Technically, does this mean that it's pumpkin spice season? Yes. Is it official now? This is so good. It's so creamy. Very, very rich though. Like it's, I'm not gonna be able to finish this whole thing. And then you have the bacon and the, the croutons in there for that, like that little bit of a crunch. Five out of five kudras. This is really good. So far, this place, I think, has knocked it out of the park. It's, it's been the best, other than the cocktail, but that isn't on their menu. That's just like, we're <laughs> Other than the cocktail, everything I've had has been like a home run. I agree. That said, what I'm about to have is not something I wanted, <laughs> but the server or the culinary <laughs> experts yeah. or consultant, whatever he called himself, um, which I think is just bad ass. He recommended this. He, he, he was like, I'm going to get you this. You're going to eat it. And this is the roasted organic beet salad. That's goat cheese, crispy beets, prosciutto, candied walnuts, and champagne vinaigrette. That looks I, good. I'm not usually a salad person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> that I don't need a lot of green stuff. But I'll say this, this doesn't even look like a salad. It doesn't. It looks like a deconstructed salad. Yeah. And I know Kitcher's not a fan of goat cheese. Yeah, I'm not. So I'll take the, I'll take the, uh, the hit on this one. <laughs> You're gonna pop that oh whole God. ball in your mouth. Excuse me while I construct the perfect forkful of roasted beet salad. I'm not even sure if I've had beets before. I, I definitely have had. Yes, oh, have. it just fell all over. Oh, oh my Jeez. God. <laughs> it's really hard to describe this. It's so flavorful. I think the goat cheese might overpower it a little. Oh, no. But that those candied walnuts, crispy, delicious. The whole thing. I don't know, like, this isn't something I would normally order. But it's good? It's, it's good. Five Peters. Wow. Five Peters. I, I, I'm reluctant to give the Five Peters away because this isn't totally not something I would order ever. Five Peters. Bernie's. Wow. Of course. Wow. Of course. We had to get the lobster. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We are truly living yeah. the sweet life tonight. And by the way, we're, I think, the only people in this restaurant at this point. We were having a chat with one of the people who work here, and he said that there's actually more, I think, crew members right now than there are guests aboard the ship. Yeah. 1,800 crew members, and there's, I think... 1,800? Is that yeah, what that's he what said? said? Yeah, that's Yeah, there's 1,800 crew members, and there's only, like, around, like, we heard 1,300 guests. For my main course, I ordered the Lobster Thermidor. This has cognac, cream, tarragon, and Parmesan cheese. I didn't know what this was, so we actually had to Google it. I was like, I know what lobster is, but what is a lobster Thermidor? Never heard of it. Apparently, they take all of the lobster out of the shell and they mix it with all the ingredients and then they stuff it back in the shell and then they bake it or something. I'm still like, not quite sure but I'm just happy that I don't have to like peel it all apart myself because I hate doing that like I love lobster but I hate doing that yeah Kendra didn't even want this I had to convince her to get it well, I didn't know what it was okay why are you calling me out <laughs> <laughs> this is good 
This is how you do lobster. I love all this Parmesan cheese on top. All the flavors here go so well together. I never would have thought to put cheese on a lobster. Well, actually, no, I take that back because my favorite thing at DCA are the lobster nachos, and I guess that has cheese on it. So what am I even talking about? This is so good, you guys. Wow. I'm honestly like blown away. <laughs> Who knew you could get good lobster on a cruise ship? I know it doesn't look like it looks kind of funky, but trust me, it's so good. Five out of five kid dress. We're the only ones in here so I could dance, right? <laughs> yes. For my entree, I guess our entree, <laughs> we got the roasted tenderloin of beef for two. This is supposed to be carved table side, but I'm guessing because of the pandemic, they're not doing that. It's served with truffle potato puree, chips, local baby vegetables, black garlic, and a selection of baronets. It says local vegetables. What does that mean? Does that mean Caribbean? Does that mean Florida? <laughs> Is there pineapples on there? <laughs> oh my God. This sauce is so savory and so amazing. And the meat is already like roasted to perfection anyways. This isn't as good as that that appetizer, we'll say that. But this is still one of the best things we've had on the cruise ship. Only thing that's bad about this is you need to get two servings of it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and I feel like Kitra got her lobster yeah. meal, so that's a... Uh... You know what? I'm not gonna give this a five. I'll give this a four out of five, Peters. So this doesn't quite get the highest marks, but, but I do very much enjoy it. I do want to add that these truffled mashed potatoes are to die for. <laughs> they, they, they are worth getting this dish for a Ooh, and the hazelnut washing Thank you, Ooh, hello. Here's your cappuccino. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Would you like to have some sugar? sugar sure, I'll please? have one of the brown ones. Mm -hmm. One piece. And that's it, right. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, our amazing food consultant. <laughs> Is that what he was? I think so. He brought us all three of the signature desserts here. The only one we ordered was the deep fried cheesecake. He also brought over the peanut butter tart and the hazelnut passion fruit bar. All three of these were amazing. Of course, everything here has been incredible, but our favorite by far was the deep fried cheesecake. So we just found out he's actually our culinary guide, not yeah. our food consultant. Yeah, we kept on saying food getting. consultant. Oh no, we, we, <laughs> sorry we, we missed. Mr. The friend, right. He was amazing. <laughs> I was just telling him this was my this was both of our favorite place that we've been to so far. Like I feel like this is the place to go. Yeah, and this was the one that you were I think least looking forward yeah, to. Yeah, I just didn't want to dress up. I didn't want to be fancy, but it was so good. Yeah. We're like finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally what? Finally those people left so we could go go to bed. <laughs> I always feel bad when I'm the last person in a restaurant. But to be fair, you know, well, the app let us make that reservation at 9 p.m. And apparently... That's actually when the restaurant closes. So it's now 10. So I guess we're only, oh, it's 10.22. Yeah. So we're there. Well, I think hour. they messed up. Yeah. I think the app is like glitchy and sometimes it'll schedule like the wrong times. Like this happened, when did it happen? We went to Wonderland? Yeah. Yeah. It was like it booked it for 9.30 and they called and they're like, we're actually like the restaurant closes at nine so if you guys want to come at a different time anyways it was good i am full ready for bed <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to be in Puerto Rico, so if you're not subscribed, you're going to want to see that video. Subscribe now. If you haven't seen the rest of our cruise vlog series, we'll put the playlist right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons, that includes... Aaron Snyder, Jose Gonzalez, Boris Buehling, and Kendall Homesteader-Gellner. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.